Greetings, salam. This is Mohsen Banan. I'm a software and internet engineer. I've been interested in email and Emacs for a very long time. My interest in email started with X.400 and the red and the blue CCITT books, circa 1988. Early on in the early 1990s, I jumped ship and joined the internet email movement. I'm the primary author of two mobile email related internet RFCs, RFC 2188 and RFC 2524. My interest in Emacs started in 1986. It was Emacs version 17 then. By around 1988, when Emacs version 18 was well in place, I started living inside of Emacs. My primary digital environment has been Emacs ever since. It has been a good life. It turns out that Emacs and email mix up really well. Here in this presentation and in the context of revisiting the anatomy of Emacs mail user agents with Marmi, multi-account resident message exchange environment. I'm offering my thoughts on this topic in this Emacs conference 2022. Long ago, I asked myself, what should my ultimate mail environment be? Over the past 20 years, I have been exploring the concept of the ultimate mail user agent, MUA. We do care about privacy, autonomy, morality, ethics, and philosophy. So from the get-go, proprietary, haram, environments such as Microsoft Office's Outlook and Google Office's Gmail were non-starters for me. But these are significant realities, and we need to deal with these realities. Notice how Microsoft and Google have both framed their MUAs in the context of Office. That type of framing is correct. An MUA must be fully integrated in the totality of one's digital ecosystem. So the ultimate mail user agent must be part of the ultimate usage environment of the ultimate digital ecosystem. In the non-proprietary halal universe, clearly the ultimate usage environment is Emacs. Emacs is today's most potent and convivial non-proprietary usage environment. So clearly the ultimate mail user agent must be an integral part of Emacs. Having reached that conclusion, we then need to determine the specifics of the shape and the anatomy of Emacs's MUAs. We could have arrived at this conclusion from the reverse direction as well. Zwonski law states, every program attempts to expand until it can read mail. Those programs which cannot so expand are replaced by ones which can. Jamie's point is very simple and obvious. The app that you live in all day should be your MUA and your mail environment. I ask those who jumped ship, who abandoned Emacs in favor of VS Code, what about email? Long ago, email expanded to including MUAs. In fact, there are many Emacs MUAs that you can choose from. If you are already hip with Emacs and Linux, you should definitely consider doing email in Emacs. But if you are not already hip with Emacs, I mean for new Emacs users, unfortunately setting up and using email is not straightforward. We I mean Emacs developers, should work on that. Emacs offers a good number of MUAs with different characteristics to suit differing tastes. 
As of 2022, you can choose from the following MUAs. GNU's VM, Vanderlost, Mu, MU4E, not much, MHE, and R Mail. Over the years, I've tried several of these and eventually landed on GNU's. The relevance column in this table simply and only reflects my taste. Throughout the rest of this presentation, I focus on GNU's. I have three types of audiences in mind for this presentation. First, if you are already using Emacs as more than an editor, it makes good sense for you to also use Emacs as your MUA. There may well be some relevant information here for you in that situation. Second, for those interested in philosophy of Emacs, I go on some bigger picture tangents that may be of value to you. Third, I address some Emacs developers with some feedback, some suggestions, and some requests. The general model here is that we would collectively work towards improving what's on the table. When a mail user agent is self-contained and includes implementation of mail protocols, we call it a monolithic MUA. Just as it is with physical mail postal service, sending mail and receiving mail are fundamentally separate activities. And then there is mail processing. Based on these categorizations, Emacs has a set of mature libraries for composing mail, sending mail, and receiving mail. These are all independently well-documented and are part of the basic Emacs distribution. Emacs MUAs then use these common libraries to process mail, each somewhat differently. The primary benefit of the monolithic MUA approach is that Emacs MUAs then become self-contained and therefore multi-platform. But when it comes to the question of merits of implementation of mail protocols in ELISP inside of Emacs, there is also another approach, that of a split MUA. Concept of a split MUA is that of splitting the MUA into two different parts, one being the usage environment and the other being mail protocols processing. The interface between these can be either direct, the upper box, or through protocols, the lower box. With GNU's, we primarily use the direct interface. The split MUA model has many advantages over the monolithic MUA model. With split MUAs, your messages are local. You can search them privately and access to your email is faster. GNU's can be used as both a monolithic MUA and also as a split MUA. GNU's and other Emacs MUAs are flexible enough to allow you to create your own split MUA. For outgoing mail, GNU's can invoke a send mail-like interface program. For incoming mail, GNU's can access mail deers directly and let other programs IMAP retrieve and update into mail deers. You can then search through your mail deers locally and privately with various mail-oriented search engines. And many have done so. For example, what we are seeing on this slide is from a 2014 do-it-yourself recipe that one of our fellow Emacs conference participants, Adolfo, had published at the mentioned URL. The recipe in that slide is based on the following tools, MB6, MU, MU4E, and MSMTP. All our choices are different. There are many such recipes out there on the web. So here, I don't want to provide yet another Emacs split MUA recipe. I want to do more. Instead, I want to target the contours of the ultimate MUA in the non-proprietary universe of digital ecosystems. 
But first, let's take a look at what's happening in the proprietary universe. The big five American proprietary tech companies, Google, Microsoft, Apple, Facebook, and Amazon, have created five competing enclaves as mostly separate and isolated digital ecosystems. In this slide, I'm focusing on the first three and each of their office and email environments. Let's clearly recognize that the economic model of these proprietary digital ecosystems is surveillance capitalism. So when any of us goes there to get a free of charge email account, he has chosen to voluntarily forego much of his privacy. And many have done so. Sadly, the rest of the world is becoming Americanized through the American internet. As of 2022, almost 90% of Facebook's daily active users come from outside of the US. Also, with respect to email, each of the enclaves have MUAs that are fully integrated in their digital ecosystems in the form of an office environment comprising of address book, calendar, time management, and planning tools, and multilingual authoring, and various other integrated tools. Now, let's focus on the right side of this picture. On the non-proprietary side, based on the Western floss model, we have ended up with lots of components. We have Debian as a platform, we have Emacs as, a, as an editor-centered office environment, and we have GNU's as an incredibly powerful MUA. But on the non-proprietary side, we don't have anything that can reasonably be considered a digital ecosystem. I mean, the services aspect is missing. Over the past two decades, I have created quite an elaborate digital ecosystem for myself. It's called Bystar. The Libel Halal by Star Digital Ecosystem is being built to provide autonomy-oriented services on Internet scale. The star in by star stands for Unix's globing symbol, signifying that our scope is everything. Notice in this bigger picture that in the red box, our focus remains to be Emacs GNU's and the ultimate MUA. I'm not here to sell you by star, but perhaps you should be in the market for something like that. We need non-proprietary digital ecosystems. Very briefly, I'll give you some pointers to the full by star story. The full by star story is a 250 plus pages book titled Nature of Polyexistentials. Basis for Abolishment of the Western Intellectual Property Rights Regime, and Introduction of the Liber Halal by Star Digital Ecosystem. I have it self-published on my own by name public web page. The by star story starts with understanding of the nature of polyexistentials. Polyexistentials inherently exist in multiples. Software is a polyexistential. Polyexistentials are naturally non-scarce, and making polyexistentials artificially scarce, which is what the Western intellectual property rights regime does, is counter to nature. Polyexistentials are unownable and should not be considered property. The Western IPR regime is in conflict with nature. But the book is more than just philosophy. In that book, I also cover the bigger picture of healthy digital ecosystems, which also includes the topic of this presentation. I'd be interested in your thoughts and your feedback, if you choose to dig deeper. And if you want to dig deeper, here are some links. My story is about re-decentralization of Internet application services. 
Among other things, Bystar provides complete own your email services. I mean, private Hillary Clinton style mail servers for everyone. There is an overview of Bystar at bystar.net. You may have noticed that I consistently use the Liber Halal label with Bystar. Halal is a very sensitive word. I'm a Muslim, but my use of halal is not in the religious context. It's in a philosophical context. And the scope of the Liber Halal label is manner of existence of software and services. It's not about halalness with respect to function and use of software and services. Unfortunately, the word halal and the concept of halal does not exist in English. So first, I introduce it into Globish. I have done so in PLPC 120.039. Further, I explain as to why labels of open source and free software are both ill-directed. We then carefully define Liber Halal software and Liber Halal services. Notice that last link. I bet this is the first time that anyone includes a link to his open business plan in an Emacs conference. I hope others would do this as well. There is appetite out there for privacy and autonomy-oriented digital ecosystems. And there is no conflict between honest business, honest profit, and liber halal software and liber halal services. The subtitle of our open business plan is An Inversion to the Proprietary Internet Services Model. And here are the same links as a native reveal slide. If instead of a video, you're viewing this presentation as a reveal web page, you can just click on the pointers and URLs. So, what was the point of bringing by story into this presentation? In tangible terms, what have we gotten out of the tangent we took on the by star bigger picture? Of course, we have the by star digital ecosystem itself, but that's not immediately relevant to this presentation. Here, through by source, we now have an integration framework, which we definitely needed. We now have by store Marmi multi-account resident mail exchange environment, which is a consistent set of MUA-related software components, which we need. We also needed to augment Emacs in our own terms. We have Blee for that. By store Liber Halal Emacs environment is by store ecosystemized Emacs. And finally, Blee GNUs, which is GNUs and Marmi integrated with Blee. With these in place, we now can dive deeper into Marmi. The idea of Marmi is that of packaging together the mail protocols parts of the split MUA. Marmi, which is of course in the context of BISOS, is the green box in this slide. For outgoing mail, we use an altered QMail. We will be looking deeper into QMail a bit later. For incoming mail, we are using offline IMAP, which is OAuth2 aware. Before going into more details, let's take a look at the parts list for Bysos Marmi and Bleak News. Marmi is a collection of Python-based libraries and Debian packages that provide for rich sending and receiving of email outside of Emacs. Here is our Bysos Marmi parts list. Marmi features include tracked mail sending for confirmed mail communication and email distribution facilities, say similar to constant contact. 
For delivery status notification, DSN, we had adopted Fluffle.bounce. I'll be touching on everything that's QMail related, namely QMailRemote.cs and MailFront in a separate slide. Not much is our choice of mail search engine. Similarly, here is our Blee GNU's parts list. Blee GNU's is GNU's and Marmy integrated with Bisauce and Blee. Notice mentions of org message and poly mode here. Later, I'll expand on these in the context of transitioning from message mode to message poly mode. With these parts in place, now let's see how they will all come together. GNUs is very flexible, and in combination with Marmy, it can create an incredibly powerful MUA. On this slide, note the boxes that include the FP's label. FP stands for File Parameters. It is the basis of BISOS's configuration and secrets management. Notice that it has consistent agents inside of Emacs and on the OS. This is a big deal in that it can reduce user visible configuration complexity. Also, notice the x822 bus here. The idea of x822 bus is that of allowing for communication among users' preferences, GNUs, and Marmy QMail through addition of X dot fields in the RFC 822 message headers. X822 bus is used for selection of mail sending agents and specification of delivery status parameters. Of key significance in this picture is our choice of QMail for outgoing mail. Compared to SendMail, PostFix, Exim, and other conventional MTAs, the QMail ecosystem is far more flexible and potent. We are not using QMail as is. Ours is called by star QMail. When we use it as a traditional MTA, we refer to it as PALS QMail. And when we use it on the MUA side, we call it Marmy QMail. Just like Emacs, QMail has a solid core and a flexible periphery. All our alterations have been on the periphery. We have replaced QMail Remote with our own Python implementation called QMailRemote.cs. By being in Python, it can do a lot more, a lot more easily. For example, QMailRemote.cs interacts with Google OAuth 2 APIs and allows you to send through Gmail. This is shown with the red circle. We have also replaced QMail SMTP D with MailFront shown with a blue circle. This allows us to use Marmy Split MUA through protocol interfaces. Let's take a look at that. Previously, we looked at the direct interface of Marmy, specifically QMail Inject and MailDeer for GNUs. But what if we wanted to use Marmy with other MUAs outside of Emacs. That can be done through the protocol interface. Marmy also includes MailFront, which can function as an SMTP submit server for local host. This way, we can configure the outgoing mail part of any MUA to point to the local host and have Marmy QMail function as an outgoing proxy. For incoming mail, Marmy Split MUA protocol interface includes Courier, which can function as an IMAP server for localhost. This way, 
we can configure the incoming mail port of any MUA to point to the local host and have Marmi function as an incoming proxy by serving the local mail deer to the MUA. All sources for all of Bystar, Bysos, Bli, and Marmi, are subject to the Afero GPL. The sources and documentation are all republished on their various organizations on their github.com slash Mohsen Banon. All of Bystar, Bysos, Bli, and Marmi reflect work in progress and we are not recruiting users at this time. For more than two decades, I have been using these all in that bigger context. They are mostly real, but so far just for myself and a few other engineers. Our model is similar to God's early days. You may ask, how did God create all of this in just seven days? Well, easy. He did not have an installed base to deal with. You can obtain and install Marmi in two ways, as is. As standalone Marmi, you can just pip install by sauce.marmi. For the GNU's part, you are completely on your own. Or on a Debian 11, you can just run the Bysos Bootstrap script. That way you will have all of Bysos, which includes Marmi, and you will have Bli, which includes Bli GNUs. If you plan to do so, I suggest that you first try it in a disposable VM. Bysos and Bli are large. Many apt and pip packages will be installed. And here are the same links as a native reveal slide. If you are viewing this presentation as a reveal.js web page, you can just click on the pointers and URLs. Let's consider Marmi as an Emacs common agent. By common agent, I mean a capability which Emacs builds on and which other apps can also use. Emacs has a very rich application development framework for absorbing common agents. Consider how Mogit has absorbed Git, or how Flycheck has absorbed MyPy, or how EIF does its work outside of Emacs. That too can be considered a common agent. The common agent model permits us to do more outside of Emacs. Common agents maximize social benefits and are more convivial. For example, any MUA can profit from Marmi. But we don't have good ways of packaging Emacs and its packages with their common agents. Instead, we usually end up with DIY recipes. That's why I am contextualizing Emacs inside of Bli and Bysos. That's what they are for, and that's why I consider them immediately relevant to this presentation. With an incredibly powerful display engine, and an incredibly powerful ELISP engine, and an incredibly powerful input methods engine, and an incredibly powerful common agents paradigm, Emacs has the potential of being any non-proprietary digital ecosystem's preferred usage environment. I am in favor of putting more around Emacs and strengthening integration of Emacs with Debian explicitly, perhaps even at the cost of de-emphasizing its multi-platform attribute. A smaller Emacs is a better Emacs. Notice that in this slide, I have used many arrows in many colors. Much of Emacs's power comes from its ability to absorb and to integrate. Tomohiro is right on the mark when he says, the reason why Emacs platform is good 
is that it cooperates with OS, not because it's good by itself. And I'm suggesting that we should raise the bar from the OS to the entirety of our digital ecosystem. There are many models for Emacs to cooperate with the OS and with applications and with services. The color of arrows in the previous slide correspond to the model of interface of the common agent. For example, subprocess invocation, pipe-based asynchronous interface, or file-based interactions. One important aspect of common agent paradigm is that both the common agent and its Emacs app need to be configured consistently. In Marmi and in Bleagnus, we use file params to accomplish this. In BISOS, there is a Python interface to file params, there is a bash interface to file params, and in BLE, there is an ELISP interface to file params. So configurations are extended. Furthermore, file params can be encrypted and credentials can be protected and shared. This is a significant improvement over .auth info and its more recent incarnations. EmacsConf could be a great place for users to provide feedback to developers and for developers to suggest to developers. In that spirit, my primary audience in this part are fellow Emacs developers. Bysos Marmi and Bleak News are starting points. We can collectively work towards improving what's in place. Some such improvements involve collaboration among various Emacs developers. Here, I'm making some explicit requests from some of the relevant Emacs developers. At most, these are requests and invitations. For each of these requests, I'm providing links for additional details. In due course, I'll follow up in the Emacs developers mailing list as well. GNUs uses XMessage SMTP method for selection of mail sending agent. Even though all the QMail injection code is still in GNUs, support for XMessage SMTP method as QMail is missing. <clears throat> it takes two lines of code to revive it. With regard to one, QMail was previously supported in GNUs. Lars, can you please reactivate it? Thanks. Two is a terminology suggestion. The term XMessage method violates conceptual layering. Please consider changing it to XMessage send method. In a split MUA setup, GNUs need not know about SMTP at all. We just need to pass information to a mail sending aging selector. Three is simply a design suggestion for which I prepared the context. .authinfo and Emacs auth source library are too Emacs centric. We need to share config info and secrets between common agents and Emacs. The file parameters approach can be a general purpose solution. Is it reasonable to extend our source library to support file params? I'll cover four in the next slide. Five is a philosophical common suggestion to all Emacs developers. We need to better cultivate the model of common agent integration with Emacs. And here are the same links as a native reveal slide. A mail message comprises of envelope header and body parts. Each of these have their own syntax, their own mode. Conceivably, each body part has its own mode. 
So we need to evolve message mode into message poly mode. More or less by default, org mode has become the beginnings of Emacs native markup language, ENML. With org message, you can write your emails in org mode, destined as HTML. Org message needs to become an integral part of message poly mode. It would be heavenly if Lars, Jeremy, and Vitali could collaborate and give us the needed message poly mode. Thank you. One way to verify that we have not gone stray in our horizontal bigger pictures is to verify them through the concept of vertical slice use cases. Let one use case be reading and writing of mail on multiple Gmail accounts with GNUs. Google now requires use of OAuth 2 tokens, which Marmi can do outside of Emacs. There is a recent email thread on that in the Emacs Devel mailing list. Let another use case be that of tracking delivery and non-delivery reports for custom envelope addresses of byname.net, which is part of ByStar. Autonomous mail services. I would have loved to walk you through these vertical slice use cases as screen captures of my Blee environment. For that, I need at least another 20 minutes. But my time is up. So let's consider this as the first in a series of presentations, where next in the series could be the mentioned two vertical slice use cases. Perhaps there could be another presentation on this topic in Emacs Conf 2023. This document was produced entirely with LiberHalal software and is published using LiberHalal Internet Services. I want to thank all the Emacs conference organizers for their great work, and Sasha, Leo, and Amin in particular.